Welcome back to the garage. Uh, this is a physics one lab working on today. It's dealing with a simple form truss. So you might be wondering what on earth is a simple form truss? It's really just a triangular structure that's used a lot in architecture and engineering in order to provide a nice stable structure. You see it a lot on bridges. You might see it up in your attic when you start looking at how your roof is designed. Um, but it's really all dealing with static equilibrium, meaning we're going to have objects. We want to study the forces and the torques applied to those objects. And we want that net force to equal zero as well as that net torque so that there's no motion going on. All right, let me show you how everything's going to be set up today. For this setup, what we've got going on, we've got a ring stand over here. Attached to this ring stand, we have really kind of like a half meter stick that's attached right here where it can pivot. Now out here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this spring scale. We're going to be looking at it measuring newtons, how much force is being applied as we take and suspend this mass and we're going to be testing this thing at different angles so i've got my protractor fastened on there so that's just one less thing i've got to hold but you can see i've got different positions we're going to be moving this spring scale and this mass to different locations figuring out how much force is required to keep everything stationary when we change these angles right here as well as the positions all right so a really important thing when you're doing this lab make sure you read these objectives before you start answering any questions so looking at this a lot of data tables here what I'm gonna be measuring for you I'm gonna be measuring this spring scale for so these are the numbers you're gonna hear me calling out you're gonna be recording on your data tables over here Again, we've got different spring scale positions, different mass positions, different angles we're using here. The boom angle, what we're saying there is we're just keeping this boom, the wooden stick, we're keeping that just horizontal the entire time. We don't want it going you know, uphill or downhill. We just want to keep it level at zero degrees. And then the other thing, you're going to need to calculate this string length. Now, there's not actually a string here, but we're saying if there were a string, if we were going to tie this thing off and keep it stationary, how long would that string become? All right, so it's going to look something like this. we got our boom over here. X is going to be your um, spring scale position, all right? So that's important. X is your spring scale position. We want to calculate how long would this string be if we were going to tie it all up, keep it all stationary. We're going to have this angle given to us. We want to calculate L. So what we're going to say is we're going to know uh, the angle. We're going to know the adjacent side. We're trying to calculate the hypotenuse. So we would want to talk about cosine. The cosine of theta would equal x over L. So again, you're going to know cosine. You're going to know x, the, the um, spring scale position. You want to solve this whole thing for L. And you're going to be doing that for each of the tests on this one. And I think in my whole teaching career, this is the first time I've had to use a blackboard to teach something, all right, or at least to show it to you here. All right, but we're going to get started. I'm going to run through each of these tests, calling out the forces, and then once you get that recorded, like I said, then you'll calculate the string length for each of these runs, answer your questions at the end. So we'll get started. All right, so we're looking at runs one, two, and three. Both the mass and the spring connected at 40 centimeter position. And we're just going to call out these measurements. So I'm at a 30 degree angle. Right now we got a force greater than 10 newtons. As we move this up to 45, now my force is dropping down to like 9.2 newtons. And then finally up here at 60 degrees, we're dropping down to 8. 0.2 newtons. All right, so just in recording these, most of them I'm just going to call them out, let you record them, but just on this first one, uh, just so you know what I meant here, greater than 10 newtons, 9.2 newtons, 8.2 newtons for those first three. You're going to have several of them like this that are just greater than 10, and that's fine. That all goes back to the objectives. 
and our spring scale over here just maxes out at 10 newtons. All right, so let me set up for the next ones. We're all set for runs four, five, and six. Got the mass at 25, spring scale still at 40. And so for a 30 degree angle, we're looking at 7.4 newtons for 30 degrees. Bring it up to 45, we're at, we'll call it 6.2 newtons at 45 degrees. And then at 60 degrees, we're at 4.8. Ready for test 789. Mass at 10 centimeters, spring scale clipped at 40. So at 30 degrees, first measurement, I'm seeing 30 degrees, 3.8 newtons. 3.8. 45 degrees, we're at 3.4 newtons. 3.4 newtons. And then at 60 degrees, 3.2 newtons. All right, so now we're ready for runs 10, 11, 12. Notice I've got my protractor moved over here to 25 centimeter position. Got my mass moved back out to 40 centimeter position. And at this 30 degree angle, run number 10 or test number 10, we're at greater than 10 newtons. 30 degrees greater than 10 newtons. Move up to 45 degrees, test number 11. We're still greater than 10 newtons. And even at 60 degrees, also greater than 10 newtons. So runs or tests 10, 11, 12, all greater than 10 newtons. We're set up now for runs or test numbers 13, 14, 15, everything connected at 25 centimeters. So at 30 degrees, test number 13, we're greater than 10 newtons. As we move up to 45, we're at about 8.8 .8 newtons at 45 degrees, 8.8 .8 newtons. And then at 60 degrees, we're right at 8 newtons for test 15. Those are test numbers 16, 17, 18. Mass at 10, spring uh, scale clipped at 25. So 30 degrees, test number 16, we're at 4.4 newtons at 30 degrees, 4.4 newtons. At 45 degrees, we are at 3.8 newtons, 3.8 newtons for test 17. And then test number 18, now we're at about 3.2 newtons. We're set up now for test numbers 19, 20, and 21. Got the mass at 40 centimeters. Spring scale now clipped at 10. All right, so watch what happens. I gotta pick this thing up. This is gonna require a lot of force. And look at this, at 90 degrees, picking it straight up, I'm already greater than 10 newtons. So I know without a doubt any other angle is gonna be greater than 10 newtons. 90 degrees, lifting it straight up, that should require the least amount of force. So if that's already greater than 10, then certainly at 30, 45, or 60 degrees, they're all greater than 10. So test 19, 20, 21, all greater than 10 newtons. Now we're looking at test 22, 23, and 24. Got the mass at 25, spring right here at 10. And look, it's like the last ones. I'm lifting straight up on this, and already my force is greater than 10 newtons at 90 degrees. So again, any other angle, it's gonna continue to get just more and more difficult for me to maintain this equilibrium. So again, greater than 10, for 22, 23, and 24. Last three, 25, 26, 27. Everything connected at 10 centimeters. So test 25 at a 30 degree angle were greater than 10 newtons. As I bring this up to 45, new, 45 degrees, sorry. Now we're at about 8.8 .8 newtons at 45. And then at 60 degrees, now we're at about 7.2, 7.2 for test 27. 
So now you've got all the measurements and like we talked about at the beginning, what you want to do the rest of your chart, you want to calculate the length of this string. If there were an actual string there, you know your angle, you know your spring uh, clip position or your spring scale position. So you want to come down here, you know that angle, you know X, you want to solve for L. And make sure, again, you read those objectives before you start answering the questions. But the main idea of this, this mass is 500 grams. We never changed this weight. The force of gravity was constantly the same. But the whole idea is when it's positioned out here at a greater distance, we call that a lever arm, the greater that distance, the more torque it's able to generate here. So this position we have here would be really hard to lift because now I'm lifting with a really short lever arm. I've got a small distance where my force is applied trying to counteract that mass that's at a large distance. This requires a lot of force okay, to balance the torque on both the top side and the bottom side. Okay, but as we move out here if we reverse this whole thing, then now our mass has a really short lever arm. My force has a really long lever arm. And now that would require just a really small force to keep all of this balanced. So torque is really all about positioning as well as the forces of gravity that would be involved there as well. Hope you were able to learn something today about truss forms as well as torque and equilibrium, how those things kind of all connect with each other. But again, if you need help, reach out to me. I'm here to help you. Y'all take care.